All right, folks, so in this video, we're going to take a look at this Red Odeo battery. It's a 12.8 volt battery, 100 amp hours, and what's unique about it, it's their new mini design. So this is smaller than their traditional 100 amp hour prismatic cell based batteries. Before we get started, I did want to say that Red Odeo lent this battery to me. That means I have to give it back and asked me to do a review on that. If you're the type of person that gets triggered when there's vendor cooperation in a review, you might be better off going and watching some cat videos. All right, we're going to pull up a spec sheet and get the actual size of this battery. But real quick, I wanted to point out um, this thing is small compared to the traditional batteries that they use. It comes with this nylon carrying handle, which is very handy. It's a little bit lighter than uh, normal 100 amp hour batteries. And then it has these M8 bolts or screws that uh, came here. I'm going to roll in a picture real quick of a size comparison so we can take a look at that. And uh, here you can see the size difference, and uh, it is quite dramatic. The other thing I'm going to roll in right now is going to be a packing picture of uh, how this thing came packed. And it did come with this extra pouch here. Uh, under, it was underneath the Tear Me Off sticker, and it has stuff in there. Let's take a quick look and see what is included. And it is some other terminal screws or terminal lugs here. And these look to be a little bit of a different color. Let me just pull this over real quick and hopefully it'll, it'll zoom. So I don't know if these are different materials or not, but uh, they are different. And then it comes with these protective caps that you place on top. And that helps in case something falls on top of your battery or something along those lines. But uh, nothing too extravagant there. All right, and then uh, I'm going to show you a picture real quick. This battery is fully charged. I've had a charging uh, on uh, my charger, and here's the picture of that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to configure this and set it up, and we're going to run some tests. And we're going to run some tests using this device. This is what we typically use, and we are going to run this test at 1C, which is a 10 amp draw. The test should take about uh, 10 hours. Now, typically, these tests are run at a 2C, which would be 20 amp hours. I'm not going to do that because this device gets a little bit hot, and sometimes it has trouble at extended duration with higher draw tests. Let's go ahead and get that started right after we take a look at the specs. All right, so here's the specs, and this will be linked below where you can check it out. But if you take a look, it is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour. This is the mini battery, and it is 1.28 kilowatts for $329.99, and probably a little bit of shipping on top of that. But what I wanted to cover was this, uh, this picture here. And here are the size uh, specifications. This is what everybody wants to see. It's uh, 5.24 inches deep. It is 10.24 inches wide, and it is 8.96 um, inches tall. All right, let's get on with the test. All right, folks, so the mystery of this discoloration or the different types of terminal lugs has been solved. The ones that I put on this battery were ones that I took and used to charge the battery. They're not the ones that shipped with it. So originally the battery came with these Teflon or plastic coatings that protect these terminals. And then we're supposed to use these terminals whenever we connect this battery to any type of device. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that now. <clears throat> what I have here is a 10 amp cable that we're going to use to connect to the battery and then connect that to our CBA analyzer here. The CBA analyzer plugs in via USB to the computer. Once I have all this set up, we'll go to the computer software and I'll show you the parameters for the particular test. So one thing I want to point out is, is that potentially this cable could um, increase some resistance and lower the output of the battery. Typically we don't see that, but I just wanted to throw it out there. Um, I fully expect to get 100 amps of capacity out of this particular battery. So what I want to do now is I just want to go ahead and I want to go ahead and connect this up to the battery. And then once this is complete, I plug in these power pole connectors to my test, my test device. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set all this up and we're going to come back once the software is configured to start the test. All right, folks, so here's the test parameters that we have set up. 
On the right hand side of the screen in blue, you can see that we have the battery type set up as lithium iron phosphate or LIFO, LIFE FO 4. I think I said that right. We're detecting a voltage of 13.6. I took this battery off the charger last night and I let it set for one day and we have the capacity set for 100 amp hours. Now we talked about this being the pouch cells. Uh, those pouch cells are arranged in a series of four groups or four cells and that's what was detected by the software. In the center of the screen under discharge you can see I set the cutoff voltage to 10.5. Typically when I run these tests we set the cutoff voltage to 10 but in the instruction manual, we're going to take a look at that later, it says that this battery uh, stops working at 10.8. So we just wouldn't put that a little bit lower. And then we are going to do the test amps at 10. So this is going to be approximately a 10 hour test. And the graph type we set is for amp hours. Okay, let's go ahead and start the test. Okay, so you can see here that the test has begun and we're getting a readout on our graph. Now we're going to come back when this test is finished and we're going to compare the results to what is specified in the uh, product manual. And that's going to be it. See you in a little bit. Thanks. All right, folks. So I just wanted to provide a quick update. And what you can see here is we've been running for about 162 minutes. Uh, we have extracted uh, 27.15 amps from the battery, and everything seems to be running well. What I wanted to do is quickly show a video where I used a clamp meter to measure output on the cable. Here you can see I'm using my Kiwitz HT208D clamp meter, and it's clamped to the positive cable on the battery terminal. And it's reading 11 amps of output. Now, I don't know if it's really 11 amps or that's some variance with the, uh, with the calibration of the meter, but it's close to what we expected. So I think I'm okay with that, but just wanted to provide this update. Thanks, everybody. All right, folks. So our test is complete, and I want to take a quick look at the data here. And what we can see is, is that we got 102 amp hours out of there, which is fantastic. Now, could we have gotten more if we had heavier gauge cable? cable? Um, potentially. I don't know. But uh, we were at 13.04 watt hours, which is over the rating, and the test ran for 612 minutes, which is a little over uh, 10 hours at uh, the 10 amp draw from the uh, West Mountain Radio CBA. So I would call that a pass. Uh, I'm totally happy with it. So the next thing we're going to do is take a look at the instruction manual, and then we're going to hook this up to a power inverter and do some output load testing. Stay tuned. So here's the documentation that shipped with the Red Odeo Mini. Uh, I really appreciate that they take the time to provide this level of documentation. I mean, it's a battery and folks are like, well, how complicated can a battery be? But these lithium ion batteries have a lot of energy in them and they're used for a variety of purposes and being rechargeable, that adds another layer of complexity. So let's just take a quick look. Uh, the first thing they have here is a quick start guide. And it looks like it starts over here with number one. And let me go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit to make it easier to read. Hopefully that's a little bit easier to read. But um, it tells you how this is going to be trouble-free for years. Uh, you got an operation guide and a product manual. It talks about unboxing. And it talks about how they ship at 50% capacity. So you do need to charge this before using it. Um, Make sure that you don't cross, cross your streams, tape everything up so it's nice and safe. A little bit of information about connecting to a solar charger, if that's how you're going to end up using this battery. Um, pretty simple stuff, but it's, it's a nice thing to have added in there and gives you a little bit of reassurance that they care about their end user base. So here's the product manual, and uh, this is one of the better manuals that I've seen with batteries, and that's fantastic. Talks about the battery itself, gives you some size specifications here, and additional things that ship in the box. Some safety instructions and some warnings, we're not going to go through that. Um, it talks about how you connect the battery and how you connect the terminals, fully charging the battery. Now here's what uh, I'm interested in is some of the extra parameters that they have here. So cell type is lithium iron phosphate. The nominal voltage is 12.8. Capacity is at 100 is rated. In our test, we got 102 amps. The energy in watts and internal resistance. If you come down here, the max continuous charge current. So this would be the most that you would want to put into the battery is 100 amps. And accidentally skipped over the recommended charge current here is 20 amps or 0.2C. So that's 20% of capacity. It, what we did here is we charged at 10% 
of capacity, so we charged at 0.1 C. For maximum discharge current, they say five seconds at 250 amps. Um, it's not a good idea to push this battery that hard, any battery that hard. Uh, you could damage the battery or your equipment or something along those lines, and uh, you could have the battery shut off. And uh, that is a safety protocol that's built into the battery management system, or BMS for the battery. Again, here are some dimensions, housing material, uh, protection class IP65, and then the temperature range for operation. Um, what's nice about these things is, is that it talks a little bit about uh, storage, and it talks about charging uh, lithium-ion batteries and some educational material here for folks who may not be aware of that stuff. It talks about solar panels, controllers, uh, and then using alternative alter alternators and generators to keep your battery topped off. All really good stuff, and then it does a really good job talking about series and parallel connections. So again, big kudos to Red Odeo for, in for including this type of documentation. So here we have the Red Odeo battery connected via these cables up to the GoWise Pure Sine Wave Inverter. It's a 1500 watt inverter. And then I'm going to turn that on, but you're not going to be able to see it because my watt meter is blocking the panel. But the watt meter is plugged in via the yellow cable. Now we're using a multimeter to measure the voltage of the battery during this test. And we also have the Kiwitz clamp meter measuring our amps or output of the battery. For a load, we're going to use the heat gun from Harbor Freight. And I'm going to just plug this into the watt meter now. We're going to go ahead and we're going to kick this on and we should be able to see the current draw. And we're hovering around 58 amps of draw at about 600 watts. And it seems to be performing just fine with no real problems or issues. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it up. So now we're upping our output. We're at 118, 17, somewhere around there, amps coming out of the battery, which is higher than the continuous discharge current. And I let this run for some time, and I didn't notice or see anything. We are seeing a little bit more voltage sag on the battery. We're down to 12.6 volts. And the meter is reading 1,200, give or take, watts of output into the heat gun. I'm going to come back, and we're going to hook up a space heater and see how that does. All right, we're back with the space heater, and we're going to go ahead and plug that into the watt meter. We're going to go ahead and we're going to turn that on. I'm going to pump up the temperature settings a little bit here so we can get some good draw. And you can see we're at about 500 watts and about 50 amps. And that is continuing to creep up. So we're about 72 amps. 75. And what I think I'm going to do is plug the heat gun into the inverter directly. And we're going to go ahead and turn that on. So remember, we were around 55, 56 amps when we turned this on. So now we're exceeding by 1.5 the recommended current draw. So we're at 150. What I'm going to do is turn this up onto high in a few seconds. And uh, we're going to see what happens then. I suspect the inverter will fail. Here we go. And the inverter quickly failed. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the performance though. Quite happy with the battery at this point. So after the test that we did over with the inverter on this uh, battery, I left it run for about an hour, give or take, uh, with about a 75 amp draw, uh, just running that space heater that I had going. Um, and let it go all the way down to the battery is fully discharged and it never got hot. The cable stayed fine. Um, had no problems with that. And I used it a little bit uh, the other day for running some amateur radio equipment. And I really like this battery, really impressed with it. Uh, you can pick it up. It's around uh, 330 bucks. And I'll have a coupon code below that I think gets you a little bit of a discount if you buy it from their site. And um, there's not much more I can say about it other than for a small portable battery that packs in 100 amps, this is, a, this is a fantastic solution. So I want to say thanks to everybody for watching. I totally appreciate it. And thanks to Red Odeo for sending me this battery for testing out and making this video. Really appreciate everybody. Thanks.